Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> you can see we got a little snow. I didn't think we were going to get so much, but we got about eight or nine inches in some places. Um, anyway, the weather has been, this has been a beautiful day. Yesterday wasn't bad, uh, but the weather has been kind of touch and go. So I'm going to do something different this time. This is in real time, but we're going to go back in time as, as we go on here. I'm work, still working on some loads for this. This thing being a challenging subject to find good loads. <clears throat> so we're still working on them. And uh, we're going to go back in time to when we were fixing the stock and uh, doing some of this other work. And we're going to go back and forth between some of the shooting I've done and some of that. And there might even be some elk in there depending on how things go. So anyway. We're going to start out first by throwing a few rounds down range. Uh, um, this is uh, 40, uh, 30, 31, and so we're going to try that out. I have a book. It's a Lyman. I forget which one it was, but it's got to be 15, 20 years old. It has a 45, 90 sharps in it, and that's where I'm getting these loads from. So you can go check that out um, and see what I'm doing. It's really a kind of a mild load. I've been working on this stock. And I'm to the point, so it was cracked here, and it cracked up into the this mortise, and all the way down into this mortise. And um, so when I went to try to stick the glue, you know, stick a little glue in there to squish it back together, it just popped off of there. So the first thing I had to do was glue it, <clears throat> and I glued it and clamped it. And now you can see where my first nail is, right there at the top of my finger. That's my first uh, nail, and that's a little piece of oak dowel. That one went in between this hole and mortise and this hole. Now I got to drill one kind of googly into this way, so it misses this mortise and misses this mortise and misses this hole. So that's what I'm going to do next. And it's, I don't know how you could put it in a, I don't know how you could put it in a drill press to do it. Because it, I don't know how the hell I'd get it to stay. So we're going to do it by hand and by eyeball. And see where it goes from there. I think, I think if I put it right here, it'll go in and it'll hold that whole section in. So, anyway, let's see what we can do. Okay, like we're going the right direction. We do not, okay, we're just a little bit into that mortar, that's okay. Okay, so come out just a little into the mortise here. I don't know how I could have avoided it, but it's not, it's way on the edge, it's not going to be a problem. And when I stick my nail in there, yeah, it's not even well. I can get a I can get a file. When I stick my nail in there, just a little bit, I can get a file and and just knock that off. So I think it's going to work. So. I want to cut it a little bit long. OK. 
Okay. I want to cut it a little bit long because I want to sand it down even with the uh, even with the uh, stock surface. I've, I've fixed a lot of stocks this way and they really uh, they really hold up well. One of the tricks is a lot of times you want your nail to fit tight but you don't want it to fit so tight that there's no glue around it. Okay? So you want it to be just a little bit, a little bit of space around it so that the glue has somewhere to go. So we'll put a little glue on it. And we'll smear that up around there. I'm just using, oh, this is kind of a, it's Elmer's glue, but it's not, doesn't have Elmer on the front of it. But it's a good, it's wood glue. So I'm going to get that thing and just stick her right in there. And, uh, and get the glue off around the edges. Some of the glue will come out around the edges. And, uh, and then what I like to do, I make it a little long. Okay. You can see it's sticking out there. Now I'm going to cut it off while there's glue there. What I want is, I want some of this wood, the sawdust, to get impregnated in that glue. So while the glue's still wet, I'm going to take, take maybe take a little bit off. Okay. And now the rest of it can be done with sandpaper. What I'm going to do is get some sandpaper. You be careful with that belt sander because you don't want to hit the stock around it because what it'll do is change the shape. I mean, sometimes it's hard to fix that. So I get it down close and then I'll level it. I'll level it off to the surface of the stock. And actually that one kind of went right on a bend, so I have to kind of make that nail fit that bend. And uh, that material was an oak, and uh, which is strong. And uh, this stock is walnut, so I think when I stain it, they'll almost be unnoticeable. So, now you can see, I don't know if it's going to focus for you. Now you can see the two nails. Boom, boom, it's glued and nailed in with those when that dries. I do not think that'll come apart. When I glued that piece in, it's just a little off, so I had to, I had to get the sandpaper and clean this mortise out. But if I, I might have to do just a little more of that, but now it fits right in there. Just like that. So that's the way I fix stocks when they're cracked and, and it usually holds up pretty good. So I got this in. I got a little crack right here but I think that I am going to lower this wood deeper than that crack uh, mainly because I want to lower the scushed and the screw is in the scushed and Oh, probably just under a sixteenth of an inch inside the metal and I'm going to take the metal down a little bit and I think that's going to remove this crack it's just a splinter so there's plenty of wood here for me to come down and then this all has to be shaped but I wanted to get it I wanted to get it started in place because now that'll tell me where this this uh, part has to go when I build that. So anyway, that's how we're going to put the screw down for the front end. And then, so I'm going to take that and dovetail that first. I'm going to have to, I'm going to need to work on that angle a little bit more. But I'm going to dovetail that first. 
Then I got to turn it over and I've got the front sight and the rear sight. I'm going to dovetail it. And then I can put it together and it'll be in the white. But then I can start working loads. I got a little so. bit of this work done while you guys are sitting back drinking your coffee. So I got. Remember we were making that uh, little dovetail to the thread and put that on. I got that on, and boy, I come real close to the edge, but I, I had enough there to work with. Um, this needs to be now. This needs to be shaped, but it's on. And then I dovetailed the sight on, and this one's going to have this flip-up sight, which is kind of what I'd like. Like I say, I mean, I could put a veneer on here one day if I want to. It's it's already threaded, but. Um, I don't think that's what this rifle is going to be for. It'd be a hunting gun, and I put a blade a blade on the front. Uh, everything seems to be operational. This is our repair here, and I haven't shot it since I repaired it. I think I probably ought to shoot it. I have I have three rounds loaded up. I got 350, these would be 350 100s. There's 100 grains of 3F powder in these. Uh, 400 and, 425 grain bullet, however, these ones weigh 449 grains, um, according to my scale. So, um, all it's really left to do is just go ahead and test it. I've shot it twice, it boots pretty good. Um, but I didn't see any pressure problems, so probably I ought to just go up and shoot it. You want to go shoot it? We should go shoot it. I've got three shots. Let's go see what it'll do. Meet you out on, grab coffee, meet you out on the range. So let's see what a 100 grains of 3F powder will do. Let's see if it's going to hurt my shoulder or what. Anyway, got the crony out. I'd like to see how fast they're going too. Try another one, see what happens. Hmm. So there they go. See better. Oh, there we go. These screens are useless. Yeah. Well, they'll probably go right back around the other side and lay down, won't they? Cool. I made some slight adjustments. And, uh, let's see where we go. Hey, okay guys, I got three more shots. This is going to be the 3031. It's running right just a couple of feet per second under uh, under 1300. And uh, I've been doing this for three or four hours and I'm trying to get the right load. Uh, that Varget looked like it had kind of a tight group, but I'm not sure because it was off the paper and it was high. Um, I'm going to try this one here. I'm going to aim a little lower and see if I can get a group with it. I'm just trying to find something that'll group, and then I'll figure out how to how to shoot it. Hmm. 
Okay, that was a really good group. At 100, at 100 yards, it was a clover leaf. Um, so it was a really good group, but it was way high. Way high. I'm going to have to see if I have another. Uh, I might have to get another front sight on this when it's a little taller and push that down a little. Because um, I was aiming probably an inch or two below the black dot, and I hit. Um, an inch above the paper on the wood, so that's way high. So other than that, it doesn't look too bad. So I just got to figure out a way to correct that because it's such a such a long way. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to correct that with the sight. Probably just get a bigger blade in the front. Anyway, I'm Buckskin Dave. That's all I got for you today. Uh, we're supposed to get some snow, and uh, I've been shooting this. It, this thing boots pretty good. I've been shooting it uh, for a couple of hours now, so I think I'm done with that. But I'm either going to use the 3030, 3031 load or the 4198 load, and they're all running around 1300. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good velocity. So I'll check you guys next time, man. You guys stay safe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.